Well, first of all, congratulations on season five. I binged all eight episodes ahead of this interview yesterday, and I think it's the best season yet. Oh my God. Wow. Thank you, Meg. Excellent. Um, I'm going to be yeah. asking some spoilery questions. I'm going to hold them until the episode, so don't feel bad about talking about any plot points. And I want to start with uh, Max. At the end of season four, we learn that Nick has gotten married. And in season five, we get to see a little bit of his relationship with his wife. What has it been like for you getting to explore this new phase of Nick's life? And is there a real love there? Nick's ah. not very good at marriage. That's what I'm learning. <laughs> Not a strong point. Um, another complicated marriage for Nick in quick succession. Um, I think there's a mutual, there's there's so much in the first interaction you see between Nick and Rose in the show. There was so much sort of off screen information that we're getting in terms of what their dynamic must be, how much they must share between one another. And it's clear, I think, to me from the outset that there's real trust between them. And um, I think that he trusts Rose in a way we haven't really seen him trust anybody outside of June on the show. So it's obviously a, a meaningful relationship. It does strike me as maybe more strategic or um, a marriage of convenience, perhaps more than a romantic. I, I think the, the log line for this year, I don't know, uh, really should be that Gilead is for lovers. <laughs> uh, you know you say that i'm you know calling him in here from virginia which is virginia's for lovers so if that's the tagline for handmaid's tale it makes yeah, sense <laughs> it's very similar to virginia oh, very good <laughs> uh bradley so kind of at the beginning of the season the center point is fred's funeral and all of this and commander lawrence is really kind of championing this for serena when a lot of the other guys in gilead aren't really interested in it what is his end game here what is he hoping to achieve by publicizing fred's funeral uh you know it's really interesting I, I i think um i think it's another example of of uh lawrence uh being led by by uh by the women, I, I, I like. I, I, I think initially he thinks you know it's it's an absolutely crazy idea, and then I, I, I think he thinks Serena has a has a kind of um, brilliant intuition about uh, an event that that uh, could end up um, uh, lifting Lawrence and lifting. Uh, lifting Gilead. Uh, but I think there's an actual moment. I think he's absolutely genuine when he initially thinks it's a bad idea. And then I, I, I haven't seen the episode, but uh, I think there, I was, I hope that there's a sense of him realizing, oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting idea. And it moves us uh, for my purposes, it moves us right past uh, the uh, questions about Fred's murder. It moves us, uh, you know, just beyond it uh, immediately. So I think there's strategic reasons, but I think he's impressed that she comes up with this. Speaking to Fred's murder, it's really interesting. Like that whole episode is interesting because obviously Nick knows what happens to Fred. Serena knows that June knows. So Serena probably thinks that Nick probably knows. And Max, I was wondering, what is it like to play with those layers of deception? Because everyone is playing a game. Everyone has their own kind of plans that's happening in that episode. Um, I think it's one of the great joys of doing this show is the space in between. You know, it's, it's um, Bradley often said the scripts are lying, you know, that people are are often say when, like in life people often say the ant antithesis of how they actually feel um so i really i enjoy i enjoy that i've always enjoyed that in the show i think particularly for me this year and a little bit last year getting to work more brad um not only really something i just admire so much but i think somebody's brilliant at interrogating and mining those spaces it makes it all the more good fun just to add, I, I, I think Max is right. There is a particular joy um, uh, on this show because of the spaces, uh, because of the paranoia. Um, Lizzie and I have talked about it. Uh, the term that we, it, it, the term that we use is sort of swimming in the weird. 
of, <laughs> of um, uh, there's a lot of subtext going on. Going off of that and the subtext of all of that, like Commander Lawrence is definitely one of the more sane men in Gilead and he has really big plans for Gilead in this season particularly. Do you think that paints a target on his back at all among the other men in Gilead? Absolutely. I Yeah, I, I it, look, I think that there is, uh, I think something, uh, there's an abandon to him in the wake of the death of, of, of Eleanor that, that continues uh, in this season. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, that, um, June has shown uh, a, a pretty dark guy what he thinks is a, a potential path to redemption uh, in some ways. I think you'll see it comes into conflict with, um, uh, with what June uh, thinks can be done and should be done, which I think Lawrence thinks might be a little, uh, a little naive. Um, uh, at this point, but yeah, I, I listen, I, 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 you know, I've gone, I, it's so interesting. I brought this dangerous girl into my home, this notoriously misbehaving handmaid. And then I have gone way out on a limb, whether it's Angel's flight or Fred's, uh, uh, murder. Um, uh, I, I think he's, um, I, 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 I think he's in a, always in a very dangerous spot the by the way question. your palette here is just like it's like some art director who did this thank you <laughs> so my last question is for max um it always feels so weird to say that nick and june are like one of my favorite aspects of the show because there is so much more than that relationship i was really curious to know how you and elizabeth keep it grounded keep that connection and maybe where you see that relationship going especially now with these new complications I don't know where it's going. I really don't. We don't know what's going to happen on the show. So it, there is this kind of, much like life, this kind of mystery of what will what will come next. Um, I love working with her. I love doing those scenes. It is a thrill. Um, it's a thrill to get to work with somebody that good and to sort of play off this kind of very heightened... Um, and I think, you know, in a show that has very dense ideas and is very intellectual and heavy, it's kind of fun to do some stuff that feels, um, I'm probably, what's the word I'm looking for, Brad? Like, it's a little bit heightened. It's a little bit more. Yeah, it's a very, it's very a very pressed yeah. situation. And it's just too bad that you guys don't have any chemistry. I mean, on screen, that's. Well, imagine Liz, Liz, Lizzie and I were, 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 I saw her last night and we were saying, you know, we never met before we did the show. None of us had met before we did the show. She never met OT before she did the show. And, and it is a miracle that, you know, that there is some kind of on-screen connection. It's fantastic because who, who knows? It could go terribly wrong. Yes. I, I, as an old man who's done this for a long time, uh, uh, you know, this uh, show is one of those miracles of alchemy on many different levels. Um, and uh, you, it's a miracle when it happens. Um, you can set out to do it, but it can be very elusive. But I do feel like the, the chemistry between Lawrence and Nick may start to rival the the, the June. It's chemistry. pretty intense. It's pretty intense. There's a lot to happen. It, it is. It is. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for taking the time this morning. I'm assuming it's morning for you as well to uh, chat with Collider. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Say thank hi you. to uh, Baby Yoda for us. Oh, I shall. I shall. I have many. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>